Welcome to the March 15th, 2017 meeting of the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission for the City of Thousand Oaks. Will you please stand and follow me in our Pledge of Allegiance? Ready? Begin. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We'll start our meeting tonight by roll call. Ms. Sembrano. Commissioner Engler. Here. Commissioner Gregory. Here. Commissioner Lemo. Here. Here. Vice Chair Simpson. Here. And Chair Reeder. Here. Thank you. I'd also like to acknowledge Sergeant Carl Patterson, who's joining us tonight. Welcome aboard. Appreciate it, you being here. Our first item of business tonight is public comments. This is a time and place for public comments. A speaker card is available for those wishing to address the Traffic Commission regarding items on the agenda or on a subject within the city's jurisdiction. Speakers for a specific agenda item shall be called and heard during that particular agenda item. All remarks should be addressed to the Traffic Commission as a whole, and all documents for the Commission and the official record should be presented to the Recording Secretary prior to speaking. Speakers are requested to state their name and community of residence for the record. Under state law, public comment matters may not be acted upon by the Traffic Commission unless listed on the agenda, but may be referred to the City Engineer for administrative follow-up. As comments can only be recorded while speaking into the microphone, please refrain from addressing the Commissioners unless you are at the podium. If you are unable to come to the podium or should you need to step away while speaking, a wireless microphone is available for your convenience. Pursuant to Traffic Commission standards, public comment cards are allowed three minutes. The yellow card will be displayed when you have one minute remaining. Also, please silence all cell phones during the meeting. And at this point, we have no public comment cards. No public comments tonight. Thank you. Next item is summary notes. Commissioners, are there any questions? None. We'll proceed on to our engineer reports. This is concerning Avenida de las Arboles at Big Sky Drive track and uh, the traffic control improvements. This is an action item tonight. Is it Mr. Finley? Are you going to be giving the presentation or Mr. Mashiko? Mr. Mashiko, then. Okay, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Chair Reader. This item is to consider traffic control improvements for the intersection of Avenida, Avenida de los Arbolas at Big Sky Drive. Uh, the focus of tonight's meeting will center on improvements uh, at the intersection to uh, greater provide greater protection at the intersection based on its recent collision history. Uh, we are working with uh, Parks District on traffic and parking issues gener generated by Walwood Park, and that is a separate matter and we'll will be handled as a separate item. Here's a vicinity map that shows uh, the western end of Avenida de los Arbolas, where it ends and becomes Big Sky Drive. Uh, this area is west of Lynn Road. Uh, Wildwood Park is accessed from this intersection. Here's an enlarged view of the intersection. And what we're dealing with here is uh, three incidents that occurred last year where a driver failed to make a right turn from westbound Arbolas into Big Sky Drive. Uh, the three incidents occurred um, after sundown and the drivers were found to be uh, DUI. Last month, the commission made a recommendation to expand on option number two, which is shown on this exhibit. Uh, this uh, option number two uh, shows improvements at the intersection, which features a narrowed westbound and eastbound travel lane by creating a buffer zone between the bike lane and uh, travel lane. Um, a stop sign control for westbound traffic, uh, extending or creating a new median onto Big Sky Drive with a guardrail along the perimeter of that new median, and also creating or adding guardrail along a portion of in front of 940 Bright Star Circle. Left turns into Waldwood Park and U turns um, at the end of Arbalest would occur at its normal location. So after hearing uh, public input, on the options presented last month, the commission voted 4-0 to, to develop on option number two. Uh, that further changes at least three elements. Uh, number one, removal of the westbound stop sign control, lengthen the new median up to Bright Star Circle, 
and create a no parking zone on Big Sky Drive. So with that, we incorporated those changes and we have option number four, which is shown on this exhibit. Uh, as you can see, the median island has been extended up to Bright Star Circle. Uh, stop sign control has been removed and there are no parking zones on both sides of Big Sky Drive. The advantages of this design is that the uh, median island with guardrail provides additional protection against errant westbound vehicles. Uh, within this uh, new median, we can also provide uh, additional uh, warning signs to help westbound traffic through that right turn into Big Sky Drive. Uh, there is no guardrail placed in front of the property at 940 Bright Star Circle. Uh, the narrowed westbound and eastbound travel lanes uh, due to the buffer zone between the bike and uh, travel lanes are expected to reduce speeds. Uh, there's um, the no parking zones help maintain visi vis visibility at this intersection and there's no impact to the uh, the landscape median um, that exists there today. This concept would take about three to six months for design and insulation. Another option that was developed is shown here is option number five. Um, it takes all the elements of option number four, but basically what we're doing is changing the ingress and egress pattern into Wildwood Park. So uh, we create a new left turn pocket within the existing center median and we take the existing out driveway and it becomes an in driveway and the existing in driveway becomes an out driveway. So with the extended median, guardrail, and no parking zone, this achieves most of the advantages that are gained in the uh, prior option number four. However, with this option, there are a couple disadvantages. Um, number one is that we would have to remove some landscaping within that existing center median and visitors who uh, accidentally pass the new ingress point for the park would have to venture into the neighborhood and make a U-turn to come back around. This um, uh, design would also take a, a longer period of time, roughly six months to one year. Uh, I, would, I would like to point out that uh, prior to tonight's meeting, I handed out an email from a resident who um, opposed this design. So. Um, uh, just want to um, remind the commissioners of that uh, email. The staff recommendation is in the staff report, so if the commission concurs with either options number four or five, we'll place that item on an upcoming city council agenda. So this concludes this presentation and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mashiko. That was right to the point, nice and short. Do we have any questions of staff by commissioners? Mr. Lemo. Uh, thank you, Chair Reader. Um, I have a couple. Uh, if you would, uh, if you could briefly let me know what the rationale was in the first option of taking away the stop sign, and uh, and then secondly, in regards to the uh, second option, um, as with any change in traffic condition, I'm assuming that the new entrance, whether it be through, you know newspaper or signage it, it's going to receive a lot of attention and there is fortunately very good traffic there on on weekends Th they're going to they're going to know about the new intersection yes they're going to have to go around if it's not right but i think that's only going to happen once uh, but if you could uh, you know give your opinion on that and also why the stop sign was taken away um Okay, last, last month uh, when we discussed option number two and it showed the stop sign that's, um, that would control westbound traffic, there was concern with the um, added noise and um, uh, issues of having to stop westbound traffic. If they're going to enter the neighborhood and there was no conflict, there were concerns whether or not it was necessary to stop those vehicles. Um, and also the issue about having to have additional uh, enforcement. When you, whenever you have a new s a stop sign, uh, the police department would, would have to be there on a regular basis initially to uh, remind drivers that there is a new condition within the roadway. There is It is a stop sign and they would have to uh, abide by the new stop sign. So there are concerns over whether or not it was uh, actually warranted. So uh, that's sort of the rationale as to why that stop sign was removed. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Gregory. 
Yeah, I just want to concur that that was one of the reasons uh, the residents that lived in the homes adjacent to that had also requested it. Also, we engineered in the extra lane so people could go around uh, people with the left turn. Uh, the way I look at this is initially, if staff tells me that the difference between attachment five and six or option four and five, I think it is, if, if that engineering wise protects a car that blows right through that as we are trying to engineer, if those all things are equal, uh, I have no objection to the stop sign initially being moved, I mean removed. However, the first instance where that is, isn't sufficient, at least we have a stop sign we can put in there, you know, to add some additional future. <laughs> Whereas uh, option five, that really isn't possible since, uh, you know, that requires, you know, re-engineering. So, yeah, I'm leaning towards option four myself. Any other questions from staff, from commissioners? Uh, Ms. Engler. Thank you, Chair. Um, first question for staff. Um, of option four or five, which do you feel safeguards the, um, protects the, uh, protects against vehicles making it to the wall of the property that is experiencing this type of experience? Um, we feel uh, they're they're equally uh, protective of that wall, even in option four. And we've just got it sketched there, but the the guardrail extends and will extend beyond the line of where we would where the, a vehicle passing that through that would hit the would hit hit the wall. In other words, it's going to pass to the south. Um, either either of those, the guardrail the guardrail. It's really just about the end treatment at that point in time. If you if you extend that median up, then you can extend the guardrail up a little further. Um, in this particular example, you'll actually flare that guardrail out to the to the south so that no one runs straight into it. But either way, they will, they'll be effective. I I have another question, if you don't yes. mind. Thank you. Um, so, as you design this, um, I've got two other questions. Are con I think they're connected. But um, what was your reason for creating option five where the people are you've reversed the entrance and exit for the parking lot you know what do you see as the value to that over the previous option um we as you recall at the last meeting um uh, the commission asked us to think of every possible best engineering solution we could so this uh this was a second uh a second option mm -hmm. that achieved the same result um sometimes you have to put it on a piece of paper and look at it and think about it for a while and get others opinion um that was a little bit of the way this went there one other disadvantage to this is um that now um people coming into the park um, are actually in conflict with people coming out of the park. So if, you, if there's a big line of people leaving the park, they're now added traffic um, eastbound that the people coming into the park have to wait for. So maybe, you know, that's, that's another disadvantage. But, again, uh, an advantage to this is the visibility looking, uh, looking to the west is very good from that location. So again, there's pros and cons to every all of these op all of these options and I don't know that there's a right a right or a wrong. It's just it's just pros and cons. My my last question and I'll relinquish um uh it, I'm sure you're in close communication with the um park district. So how does CRPD see this option for reversing the use the access and and, and exit um, of the parking lot and uh, do they have a feeling I know you've been working with them in previous public meetings uh, yes we communicated both these designs option number four and no, option number five with the park district and they're fine with uh, either design uh, it would not create any uh, difficulties on site with the existing parking lot yes yeah um, option four also meets my criteria of quicker is better when it comes to protecting that neighborhood. So the fact that it can be done in half half the lead time or possibly even a quarter, I think is appealing. 
Thank you. Mr. Lemo. Thank you. Um, I, I tend to agree. I like option four, too. I just have one major concern about option four. Um, years and years and years ago, when I was in traffic commissioner junior high, they sent us away to learn about the exciting world of stop signs. And I think actually Commissioner Gregory had a drive that day. I wasn't old enough. But anyway, <laughs> here's what we learned, and that is it, uh, stop signs are to help uh, determine right of way. Um, now, I know that if you're thinking all the time, if you're making a left turn across traffic, you know traffic's got the right of way. But it seems to me that there's a tremendous benefit in starting off with that stop sign to establish the fact that the traffic coming at you is not going to stop. And if you're at a stop sign, you, you need to yield that right of way. Uh, I don't know if the same thing can be done with a yield sign. I really don't. But I think that we need to underscore that a little bit because it's been the way it has been for so long. And that's my only comment. Do you and have a question for staff? And it, Do you have a question? Well, I'd like to respond. I, I like want to, to know respond. what they think. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you, Commissioner Lemo. Um, the one thing it's, it's, uh, that we have contemplated is whether we would place a yield or a stop sign right at the right before you cross in to that to that location on option three. In other words, you make the left turn, and you at the very least we may want to yield sign there. We we haven't finalized the geometry on this option exactly to see. You know exactly all the signs aren't in place the advance warning signs etc so we will consider putting a a yield sign at least there and potentially could put a stop sign there thank you very much. um I'd, I'd like to make one other comment that goes back to commissioner angler's question about option four versus option five this guardrail is a typical standard caltrans guardrail which is used on uh, freeway is up to 70 miles per hour. Um, as far as preventing a vehicle from reaching the wall, um, I don't know that we can make that guarantee, obviously. Um, we've all seen, many of us have seen vehicle accidents against guardrails, and, and, uh, and I've also seen gaping holes in guardrails. So... Um, this is put in per the design standards. It will be, uh, it'll be as strong as any 70 mile an hour guardrail is built. Um, but again, uh, the size of the vehicle, the speed of the vehicle is going. I mean, those are all things we really don't have control over. Yes, Commissioner Gregory. Yeah, uh, do those incorporate K rails and like steel cables or just one? Um, well, this is not, this is not contemplated as being a K rail okay. or this is a, the design here is a timber guardrail, which is the equivalent of a metal beam guardrail. Um, we've used them in other locations, Borchard Road as an example in the city. Also at the, at the terminus of Petrera Road and Westlake, there's actually this exact, uh, they are designed, they're, they're a metal backed, um, wooden faced guardrail. Um, they're very substantial and they look they look quite nice, um, but they have the same traffic rating, the same design uh, qualifications as the steel guardrail. The one thing I will say is this one will be a little stronger because when you put it on a curve, rather than the posts being eight foot apart, they're actually four foot apart. Mm -hmm. And those posts, I believe, are 12 by 12. I mean, they're substantial posts in concrete. Um, the way a guardrail works is wherever that point of impact is, um, as, as you've probably seen, it starts deflecting, tearing posts out as it goes, but it holds itself together with all that steel. So it, it works as a unit. You, know, you think of, wow, if I hit that one place, uh, I'm gonna go right through it. Well, it's, it's connected, it's attached. So you know, it's likely it'll tear out you know, 20, 30, 40 feet of this thing if anything were to actually try to get through it. And it's designed on a curve, so it's really designed to deflect um, a vehicle and that energy and, and push them up Bright Star if, okay. if they were to hit Good. it. I had a different image of it, but uh, yeah, that sounds like you've engineered it. Thank you. Ms. Simpson. 
And I was looking to um, elaborate on uh, Commissioner Lameau's question about the stop sign. On um, At our last meeting, the option that we chose didn't have the same diagram of the cars or of the multiple lanes coming to that stop sign. So it was just a single lane entering the community. And um, because of that was where we felt um, that noise could become very intrusive and there wasn't really a strong benefit. Um, but I see what you're saying with the drawing on option four where the yield sign would potentially be a great solution to establish right away or potentially a, a stop sign if necessary. And then uh, the other question I had is regarding the the wall right now that's um, been modified, the, the cement that's there that was, I checked it out so I saw that that's new. Um, is that going to be remaining in place after we finish the project or will that be um, updated and removed? That, that is just a temporary barrier. Uh, once this uh, meeting goes in and the guardrail is installed, we uh, we would be removing that and, and letting that area return to whatever the landscaping that it is and, and whatnot. Thank you, Ms. Simpson. Any other questions? Well, good. I, uh, very nice comments from everyone. I think we're really grinding down into some uh, specific facts to get this thing right. I myself uh, is, uh, is not as, as comfortable with option four as, as uh, some of the people on this commission. Um, the reason, could we go, well, let's stop here. Let's start here with option four on the screen. I noticed that the uh, bike lane is not going all the way to Big Sky, or on option five it does. I assume that this is because as cars slow or even stop to make the left turn into the park, cars in back of that may veer to the right mm -hmm. to pass, which means uh, the bicyclist would be in danger thinking he's in a bike lane and someone swerves into that. So can we go to uh, option five? Now here, the uh, bike lane goes all the way to the end. And uh, option five, makes it unnecessary to have any signage as far as yields or stop signs. The um, pocket to turn left keeps uh, slowing traffic away from through traffic so they do not have to swerve into the bike lane. So if we're looking at this to protect property, I think we also have to look at safety of, of uh, the people involved too. Uh, I believe the bicyclist here is, is at a dis disadvantage with option four. Another point that had occurred to me while you were talking about whether or not the barrier would be able to actually stop a car, of course there are variables such as speed and weight, so it's impossible to say. But there is one thing that option five has that option four does not, and that is the angle of incidence of an impact. The barrier is much more likely to deflect a car if it has a shallow angle of incidence. Do you agree as engineers with that? Uh, as the incidence, angle of incidence increases, the car is more likely to have more force on the barrier? Um, yeah, it's actually, yes. Yeah, you're, you're correct. The, the more you hit on the curve, the more likely it is. I think it's actually that angle decreasing, but that's okay. It's, you've got the right idea. Okay. The higher you hit on the curve, the more it's going to go around the corner. Right, and if the angle is uh, the other way too, it would tend to have a car that impacts such a guardrail, it would tend to have it spin out of control rather than to possibly shove it in, into the right direction in a forward direction. What are your thoughts? Well, can we go back? Can we go back to option four? Um, if you look at the lane location uh, of option four and option five, the travel, the through lane is actually the same location. So. Um, and the curve is the same. Uh, if if we can imagine that just being extended, it, it really is the same. It's the same angle if you're uh, approaching that in the in the right lane. Now, uh, excuse me, in the through lane, the left lane. As soon as you move over to the right lane, you're absolutely correct. Now you're hitting the flat part of that guardrail. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, I don't expect. Uh, well, let me say this. Historically, when the DUI drivers have come through, there hasn't been anybody in the queue trying to turn left. Um, I also want to point out that on option five, we put that in there so that you could stack up to about three vehicles. 
Now, on any typical weekend, um, I don't know if there might be three people trying to turn left or four or certain times of the day, five, six, seven. At that point in time, um, they'll be queuing out in. They'll be queuing out into the through lane, and the vehicles trying to get around will actually cross over into the bike lane back uh, to the to the west east of this photo. So, when it's real busy, um, you're probably going to have the same problem whether you're at the corner or at this location uh, is what I'm guessing. That's again, that's only at the busiest times on a Saturday afternoon. Um, so that's that's right. just and, and of course we haven't defined what real busy actually is. Have we've done measurements of vehicular traffic on the weekend? Uh, we have. Yeah, we uh, we have measured uh, the the volume of traffic on Arbalus uh, during um, a, a Saturday. Uh, during the weekday, it's about fifteen to sixteen hundred cars. That's both directions on Arbalus, and then. Um, on the weekend, the volume level jumps up about 800 additional vehicles. So that's 400 each direction uh, on Arbalus. Are those in specific time periods? Is that over an eight-hour period, for instance, or a six-hour period? Or that's over the whole 24-hour uh, period. The entire day. So at night, there's probably, except for the DUIs, guys. <laughs> They're there. <laughs> that's, that's all daytime traffic, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. uh, w one thing I want to point out on option number four, the way that we uh, dashed, the bi we ended the bike lane and then create a dash line. This is the typical uh, method that we use at a intersection that uh, where a bike lane ends and we start the dash line, a heavy dash line to remind drivers that, okay, they can start entering that area. Um, and then it's a reminder to the cyclists when they see that dash line, they need to be aware that uh, automobiles can enter into that area so that, you know, to avoid any conflict with, with, uh, with the uh, automobiles. All right. Uh, one last thing, and then I'll let one of the commissioners make a comment, too. Um, concerning um, the time of needed to implement such a change, um, this was of some concern at our last meeting where it was thought that it was fairly urgent to get something going here. Um, for option five, it would take up to a year to actually implement the change. To, for option four, up to six months. Now, the last time, well, it was then described in the report that the additional time was because we would have to change a median. In other words, punch a hole in the median and make a, a left turn pocket. The last time we addressed such a situation was in 2015 when we modified the left turn pocket at Westlake Boulevard and Avenida de las Arboles. And I looked at that, and uh, the actual construction of that change took 53 days. So the rest was in planning and uh, whatever else the city needs to do. So my question is, when you estimate a fairly simple construction project as this to take up to a year to complete, and we know from experience that it only takes 53 days to actually do it. What does the city do for the other 10 months? <clears throat> once uh, once we uh, kind of get clear direction on where we want to head with this, we will have to complete the design drawings. Uh, we will have to um, uh, Probably this isn't this isn't, isn't in our current budget, so we will have to move money around to to do this project. We'll have to go to council. Uh, in this particular case, with these modifications and removing trees, I know there's folks out there that have been opposed to this. We'll have to do some additional outreach since this was not. Uh, we did a significant amount of outreach on on Westlake and Arbalus. Um I'm sorry, Westlake. Yeah, Westlake and Arbalus. Um, and uh, we'll go to council. Uh, then we'll have to go out for probably a, f a formal uh, bid period, which takes several months to complete, get a contractor on board. And, and, and uh, the construction itself is not all that significant, but there's an awful lot of upfront stuff. And again, we, we gave a time period of three to six months on, on, option, on option four. I would say that's going to be, you know, Depending on how the summer goes, could be closer to, you know, the, the four or five, 
range, and I would guess that the other option might be closer to the six, seven, eight range. Not not significant. You know, we we just kind of wanted to give you. Thank some you. Thank answers. you for clarifying that. Yeah. I, I thought three months was a little optimistic from my experience. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Further questions, Mr. Lemo. Well, I was wondering if you would entertain a motion before we have uh, discussion. So. And and then we still have to do public comments. Actually, we should probably do public comments before the motion. So, I'll withdraw my suggestion. All right, uh, Commissioner Gregory. Yeah, um, yeah. I appreciate you bringing up the uh, bicycle traffic. Um, here was my thinking on that, though, and I'd like staff's opinion on it. Um, that most of these bike riders aren't pedaling up into the neighborhood because the turn into Big Sky is just a big hill. It goes into residential. They're probably going to the park, right? Mm -hmm. So at this point where the bicycle lane ends, they they need to start safely moving over to make a left-hand turn, you know, into the park. Um, how will you handle the striping and sharrows and all that to allow the bikes to... There, There's going to be some kind of conflict use you know possibly our new blue uh, markings or what 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 are your thoughts on that well um, I mean basically what we're doing here is providing the standard uh, type of treatment that we you would provide at any uh, location where uh, vehicles can start entering the area that would normally be occupied by a bike lane uh, w uh, we could take a look at adding the Shero within this zone to remind drivers as another measure besides that uh, heavy uh, skip line that we would add that cyclists would be in the area and we could also post additional signage as well. Okay, thank you. And, and just as a follow-up, it sounds like you're also referring to the bicyclists that, cyclists that might also want to be turning left into the park at this location? Yeah, that's exactly where I would think bicycle. I mean, they're either turning around to just, you know, from going west to go back east. Yeah. Uh, or they're going into the actual uh, parking lot where well, they may do something and then, you know, head home. So at, so at this location, this is very similar to to many intersections. There wouldn't When you kind of get to the end of where the bike lane is designated and you get to that stripe, that is a transition zone. Uh, where we would typically expect bicyclists, if they want to merge left, they go left, cars go right, people kind of move around within the intersection and go where they need to go. Again, at this point in time, um, we would hope that people are reducing their speeds, particularly those turning left and those turning right, too. This is still a 15-mile-an-hour right turn. So so by by the time we get here, everybody should be significantly slowing down so at, at that point it's more of a right do, you, do I see you you see me I'm moving over there that type of thing I think all right thank you one comment from me um, I've noticed that uh, people that are on their bikes in this area are mountain bikers and I've been a mountain biker for years and we do not ride our bikes to the trail we put them on the back of the cars and we all see that every day so uh, Mr. Gregory's comment would be more directed towards uh, road bikes, which probably wouldn't be that frequent in this area because it's not a destination for road bikes. But uh, just an observation. Um, I had one other thing to say, too, and I can't remember what it was. But I'll think of it on the way home tonight. <laughs> Are there any other questions? All right, we'll move on then. Uh, thank you very much for a good engineer report. Appreciate it. And um, we have now uh, public speakers. We have uh, certain cards. Uh, we'll, we'll address the podium. Um, the first speaker will be Paul Orkut, followed by Jerome Price. And when you reach the podium, please state your name and city of residence. My name is Paul Orcutt. I live at 930 Bright Star Street, which is right at the corner of that intersection. My house backs onto that intersection. Um, <clears throat> 
I first of all I want to thank the Commission for the work that you've done and uh, as as well as the traffic engineers and um, I appreciate everything that's been done for us um, there's one option that I am personally more in favor of but I am actually glad that you're making the decision that I'm not um, I will express my opinion um, many of my neighbors may disagree uh, but I am in favor of option number uh, five uh, attachment number six uh, primarily because I am very familiar with that intersection because I look at it all day long um, and I can see with option number five something that was not addressed and not discussed um, there being significant amount of confusion with that opening uh, for the entrance to Wildwood Park I do believe that what will ultimately happen is people will try to exit the entrance and create a mess in that intersection um, therefore that's the reason I'm in favor of number um, attachment five or option is it four 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 um, <clears throat> because it's clear as to what the traffic is supposed to do there there is a downside to option number four that wasn't discussed as well and that is that left turn into Wildwood Park um, on the weekends the park parking lot is full and the people making that left turn will not realize that there's no parking spaces and will enter that parking lot anyway and then have to get out of there because there's not been a weekend that I can recall for several years that that parking lot had any spaces after noon um, on a Saturday or Sunday um, <clears throat> like I said I may not be a popular neighbor but I want to speak my conscience I'm glad you're making the decision and anything that can be done to protect our neighbors and protect their homes is appreciated. Thank you. Any questions? Are there questions of Mr. Orcutt from our fellow commissioners? No questions. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Our next speaker is Jerome Rice. And Mr. Rice, for the record, please state your name and city of residence. Uh, Jerome Rice. Uh, I live in Thousand Oaks. I live on Big Sky Drive, five houses from the park. I've been a Thousand Oaks resident for 41 years. <clears throat> I am personally in support of option five, but there's been a number of things that I've heard this evening that sort of concern me. There's a 15-mile-an-hour sign as you come down Los Overlays. There's no 15 dollar mile an hour sign when you come down Big Sky. So coming down Big Sky and going around through the park, speed is going to be what it's going to be, okay? It's not going to slow down to 15 miles an hour. Um, my, may I ask a question? How uh, many accidents have occurred in this area besides the three drunk drivers in the uh, last few could years? Could you direct the question to staff, please? How many accidents have occurred in the last three to four years in that area? Okay. Well, we were going to take all the questions and then um, uh, okay. provide questions. They'll answer that at the end of after, after all the speakers okay. have spoken. <clears throat> anyway, I personally feel that the reason this, all this is going on is because three DUIs slammed into somebody's wall. Okay? And it seems to me city of Thousand Oaks could probably buy the house and put up another wall cheaper than what we're doing here okay so if the whole purpose of this is because of three DUIs okay I think we're making serious mistakes okay but I'm glad it's in your hands not mine the parking and I, I know this is not about parking I can't get out of my driveway someday I'm five houses from the park because there's SUVs on each side of me blocking my mailbox and I try to come out of my driveway I can't see traffic coming Okay? So the most important thing is parking, not how I get around and into the park. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from s staff or from uh, my fellow commissioners? I do. Mr. Could Rice? you identify your house location again, the address? <laughs> Three zero. Yeah. Three zero six nine Big Sky Drive. Thank you. Any other questions? Next speaker, David DeMaio. It's nice to see you again. 
Nice to see you all again. It's Dume, Thank like you. the month? Dume. Dume, oh, I yeah. heard it another name. I'm yes, sorry. yes, yes. It's okay. Okay, please the only state person, your name for the record. The only person who could say it right was my French city teacher. City of residence, please. <laughs> <laughs> David Dume, uh, wife Cheryl, 940 Bright Star. We're the person that had the cars go through the wall, sir, so that's us. Um, thank you, uh, Commission and staff, for working on this. Uh, three meetings, uh, a lot of work, communication was, was, uh, was great. Um, our main focus was to keep cars in the street from the beginning. Um, we have the opportunity now to do just that with these two options. But option five gives us more money and more safety for what we want to do. Protect our property, yeah. Bigger guardrail that goes along the median, uh, more safety in that intersection. It protects people coming down from Big Sky. It protects people around the corner. You don't have people, people know where to go. Left-hand turn lane, they're in the park. They don't have to look at the turn right, turn left, where they're gonna go because I think you can ask anybody when they go to that left turn where it is now, where option four would let them in, that's confusing. This will give people more direction safer controls into the park one way, out of the park the other way, and they'll have to go eastbound. They won't be able to come up Big Sky. So when you, when you make your decisions, think about more bang for your buck. This is the opportunity to, to do it right the first time. I know a couple commissioners are, are thinking about, you know, uh, maybe stop signs in the future. Okay, but I think if we go with option five, it solves a lot of problems. Um, there may be some objections to moving a couple trees, uh, but I'm sure the city can replace those trees in another fashion. Uh, there's trees that are just on the other side of the, the, the street, so you're looking trees on trees. Um, quicker is not always better. Right now there's big Lego blocks in front of our wall. Um, and I thank uh, staff for getting those there. Um, maybe one a little sooner, but that's okay. They're there now. Uh, we move forward. So with those, we feel, you know, okay for now, but I'm willing to push the other couple months out to get it done right. Um, I had none of the questions, but you guys answered them. So um, option five is one we prefer. Thank you. We have one question, please, uh, Commissioner Gregory. Yeah, um, and thank you for your input. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, I heard two things. I heard so far as protection, four and five were the same so far as the cars go forward. But what I also heard was an issue with sta cars stacking up going into the alternate. And there's, there's only room on option five for three cars. So I'm wondering, okay, as that stacks up, how many are going to try to go around, go up to the end, and do a U-turn up there? They do it. Try to come in. Yeah, they they so do it. Yeah, yeah. That's a real concern about causing a traffic issue and bringing cars up into the neighborhood, which people have already said right. is an issue. I, so you know, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, did, you know, did you consider that? I I didn't consider that. Um, one of the things I do see every weekend is cars making U-turns at Big Sky and and Bright Star now, um, but. <laughs> You know, if you have to stack up a car, you know, there's no protection right now for anybody coming down Big Sky. There's no protection. A car either coming through blowing the stop sign or making that left turn, there's no control. Hence your concern for a stop sign or, or a yield sign. But right now, this solves that problem. You don't have to have a stop sign. It controls that intersection. And, you know, and, and the other thing is no matter which option we choose, those that come to the park are going to have to learn it. And so, you know, and, and that's, that's really true because most of the folks, we've had a separate meeting with the park and most people aren't from around here, which is fine, but it just creates other problems. So for, for us and for me, uh, seeing it every day, um, I think this does more, more than just protect our property. And I, and I know what the engineer said about the same protection for the guardrail. Option five just goes a little bit farther and maybe gives a little bit more protection, if, if I'm looking at that correctly. Mr. Finley, if that's the way that, that looks like to me. Any, any other right, questions? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, later I just want staff to, uh, to address whether the parking lot, I know they've had a meeting, you know, maybe reply to the, 
ingress and egress, you know, whether there's going to be additional striping in the parking lot to direct cars, or is it going to remain the same? Thank you. Just to clarify, um, as far as cars queuing up during the heavy times mm -hmm. on the weekend, it seems like option five, as you described, would also lessen that because you have at least three cars at one time queued up out of the line of traffic, whereas the other, um, those three cars would still be in the line of traffic. And at also at that time, I don't think the queue would have to wait very long. I don't think the traffic going eastbound on Avenida de los Arbolas is all that heavy during these times. Have you, have you noticed? N no, sir. It's, it's not. It's, um, w this will, option five will give people direction. Right now, there really isn't direction. The street ends, the median butts around, and there's no direction. It doesn't say turn left. It doesn't say turn right. It's just there. This will give people a direction as to where to go. And when people have direction, it gives them more sense of confidence w what they're going to do. Right now, there's indecision. And so they're looking at the park. They're not even looking at anybody coming northbound. They're just, how can I get to the park? Oh, Disneyland. That's how I can get in. So I, I believe there's, there's, that's what I was trying to, ex to say. This is an opportunity to, to get a lot of things done with the project. Maybe it costs a couple more months or something, but I think in the big picture, it solves a lot of problems. What is this existing sh signage now for people entering the park on the curve? I believe there's a yellow sign that says um, either opposing traffic doesn't stop or or something to the effect of you watch for U-turns or something to that effect. All right. So there's no direction for a motorist that this is where to turn to enter the park. No. Chair. Yeah, sure. One moment. So in option five, we could also put a sign in the median that this is where you enter the park. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And, th and if there's one other thing, um, I hate when that happens. So what happens when you're over yeah, 50? Well, happens to me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trim the tree. If I can request to have the trees trimmed on the south side of the street, because when you're going westbound, you don't see the, the sign on the north side of the street. You can't see that 15-mile-an-hour sign. If I could have that request, please. Uh, Mr. Lemo, you have a question? Uh, well, I have a comment. Um, uh, more about uh, or a point of order, actually. Um, it's hell being the geezer on the traffic commission, but I'll, I'll, I'll wear it proudly tonight. I, I think if we're going to have questions about signage or traffic flow, we need to direct them to staff uh, because they know that information better. Second of all, I want to make sure that this doesn't turn into another four or five meetings. And based upon what I heard tonight, if we were going to consider anything, I would consider making it another four or five meetings. And the rationale is we've gone from this being a problem with drunk drivers not paying attention to now we have made the perfect the enemy of the good. Let's solve every problem that either takes place or may have taken place. What I want to know from staff is sober drivers who are there only using the park, how many times do we have accidents right now? Because I've been to that park a lot. And I may be the only person in Thousand Oaks, but I have never, ever seen an accident or, for that matter, even a close call. And so I want to make sure we, we stay focused. And the best way to do that is for us to take a look at what's in front of us with the solutions that we were asked to come for over the last couple of weeks and move on. Otherwise, I, I can tell you there's, we're not going to move on. And, and it's really important that we... We maintain some level of focus. Otherwise, we're not going to get it, it done at all. That's my comment. Thank you, Mr. Lemo. To build on that, too, um, as far as our options go, we're eliminating parking. When I was over there and there was parking in the street, uh, cars drove very slowly because uh, there was a lot of distractions. But if we take those distractions away by not allowing parking, I would expect the uh, average speed of a motorist through that in area would increase. What is, what is staff's? Okay. All right, we'll come back to that. Uh, any other questions? From Thank you, Mr. DeMace. Thank you. Thank you all. 
Our next speaker is Mr. Cullen. Good evening. Please uh, state your name and city of residence. Neil Cullen, Thousand Oaks. I live on 980 Bright Star, up the street. First of all, I want to thank the Traffic Commission for uh, the engineers for coming up with these two plans. I think they're both excellent. I want to thank the Commission for listening to all this. I don't think it's too complicated. I think, we, I think everybody's going to be voting on one or the two with minor changes. It's not a big deal, in my opinion. I think the excellent work here, and we're going to get the safety of that intersection um, taken care of in one full swoop. And what I do, and I, what I like, and what we didn't, we didn't talk about is there will be no parking on Bright Star. It's marked on your plans, which is near miss every 20 minutes. Somebody's out there with their little kids. Ha they, they're on the driver's side, out in the street. We're coming down around the corner, turning right on, on Big Sky, and I've almost taken off doors. I've almost ran over dogs on leashes that are out in the middle of the street. So by eliminating that parking right there, possibly there hasn't been any accidents yet, but somebody is going to die there. And, and, and we don't have a problem. The people that live there, I've lived there for 28 years. Paul Orchids lived in his house on the corner there for 32 years. The problem isn't the residents that live in the neighborhood. It's all our, our guests that come to visit our park. And with these numbers here, 15 to 1,600 during the week, those are residents that know what they're doing, bringing their kids to school, driving to school, back home from school. I don't care if it's middle school, high school, or Wildwood school. That's quite probably quite a bit of your 1,500 drivers every day. But look at your numbers on the weekends. How, no one's taking their kids to school on the weekends. It's people that are lost. And it was brought up last meeting that they're coming down Los Arbeles with their GPS on. They don't know, they're not looking out the front windshield. They're looking at their GPS. And you can see it. You can stand right on Paul's corner there, and they'll get all the way down there and try to turn. They don't even know about turning left into the park the way it's set up right now. There's no signage. There's no nothing. So for 30 years, we've been very lucky. Maybe there hasn't been any accidents there, but, but I'm in, in mostly in favor of option five. And option five to me will alleviate all the problems that we have down at the corner. Drunk drivers, I can't talk about the drunk drivers. We'll see what happens when they hit the guardrail. But the thing is, but the thing is, the people that are lost with signage in the medium and letting them know that the park is 200 feet to your left is going to take care of a lot of problems. And, and we didn't talk about after the guardrail there going up to Bright Star, is that going to be a curb? Is that going to be uh, a little bit of an island with two curbs that's three feet wide or whatever? Maybe it's two feet wide, it says right there. So maybe the answer is right here in front of me. But that's going to be a, a huge plus because people don't wait to get to that corner to Bright Star and, and, and Big Sky to make their turn. And that happens all the time. Go there on some weekend and, and, and see how many people can drive down our place and see that the parking lot to the park is full. And then they're going to look for a parking on Big Sky. Okay, so you go there on the weekend and see how many people make that U-turn and, and, and they're lost. Or, or option number four, if you put that in, we're gonna have the same problem. People try to turn and they can't turn, they look and see the parking lot is full in option number four and they start backing up, up Big Sky to turn and go east on our place. Maybe you lost me. They're coming west. They're turning left into the park. They see that the parking lot's full, and now they can't make the turn to go east on Arbalace, so they're backing up Big Sky, making a three-point turn, and going 
back east. We see that all the time. It's very dangerous down there at, near Paul's house. We stand down there in the corner and talk about it and laugh at and see all the people that are, are confused. But I really think that you're going to alleviate a lot of problems with option number five. And um, I think make the neighborhood, the people that live there and use it every day, happy with that option. You're taking all the problems out of that intersection and you're going to you're going to uh, keep the house on the corner there safe with thank you mr collins thank you appreciate you coming tonight uh hold on mr collins don't leave the podium yet we have a question uh commissioner gregory yeah because uh, you brought up some information we weren't aware of again so uh are there a lot of, are these just large vehicles or people you know uh pulling trailers or well, what i mean who what kind of we see it all the time there's moving vans there's uh, because whenever you see a construction truck or I said a flatbed truck or something like that, he, he might want to go from Lynn Road east on Arbor Lace, you know, but they find themselves going west on Arbor Lace, past the park, past the school, past the park, coming all the way down to Bright Star instead of going into the track. Now they're using the turn lane into the park to try to maneuver their big truck around or whatever, or it could be an automobile where somebody wasn't paying attention. But a lot of times people turn left into that park right there without looking up Big Sky to the north. They never, they never, they're, they're just looking, they're, they're, their dog is barking in the back, the kids are yelling, there's the park, and it's con total chaos. And Option number five, you're going to alleviate all that. So they're still well, going to park in you, our neighborhood, but we're not about that. that. That's just a steep a turn, though, right there. And if they miss it, they're going to have to go up Big Sky and turn around that intersection. Yeah, they, they can go up. Uh, they can turn right on Big Sky and go back to Frontier and go back out, too. But And people do that. Huh? Uh, we can't have discussions from the floor. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, we can't. I, I, I just wanted just to give. I, I, I just, I just want to give you my opinion. You, where that, that corner the right now. With U turns are making the U turns. Yeah. All right. But if they're make, if they're trying to get into the park, they're going to get into the park with option number five. No question about it. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collin. Our, our next speaker is Mr. Lake. Please state your name and city of residence, Mr. Lake. David Lake, Thousand Oaks. Um, I'd like to uh, I actually live in the 926 Bright Star, the second house from the end next to Paul. I'd like to also thank the commission and staff for, for all the good work uh, and the neighbors for coming out and, and voicing their opinions. I agree with most of what uh, my neighbors have said. Um, I want to uh, register opposition to any stop signs. I don't think that that would help in either option. And I'd like to point out to staff that until CRPD does something to spread this traffic volume out to other park entrances, and there are many with many, many developable parking spaces, uh, there's going to be a large volume of pedestrian traffic crossing into the park. Uh, there, there are large numbers of cars parking on Big Sky. Now they're going to be pushed onto Bright Star. But they're going to be crossing um, that intersection. And so with option four, um, there's there going to be quite a few pedestrians crossing into that little kill zone with the cars coming at them. Just, just pointing this out, that this is what the reality is. Um, I also would like to um, uh, report that my neighbor, uh, one house further down, Bright Star, called me just before the, the meeting. He can't be here tonight, but he wanted to register opposition to option number five, which puts the, the backup and the turn lane directly behind his house. Uh, at the very least, he would like more time to, to think about it. I don't think we got a lot of notice of this, of this particular option, uh, which I think sounds pretty good to me but he doesn't like it thanks thank you are there any questions from commissioners 
No? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Paul Nicholson. Good evening, Paul Nicholson, Thousand you. Oaks. Oh, you know what to do. Great. Yeah, I live up on Bright Star, um, up the street. And I really like option number five. I've, I spent a lot of time last year collecting sore signatures and sitting in the park. And I, I'm intimately familiar with the traffic patterns and the people flow and everything. And um, there's a number of problems with the current entrance. For one thing, when you come in, the whole road's on a camber. It's on a camber. And as you drive in, the slope gets even more and more. And then you get to the point where the entrance is to the trail going over the hill. So people are parking in the parking lot. They're going up the trail up the hill, the road is cambered, the cars are starting to tilt, pickup trucks that park down below the camber, if they park going in forward when they try to back up, if they're lightly loaded, they sometimes start skidding in the park. So it gets congested there. You have the people coming in, they're confused, you have the pe pedestrian traffic, and people are funneled into the parking lot. Now one of the problems with the congestion at the park is that people aren't using the inner parking lot. If they come in, the entrance that you will create with option five. If they come in that entrance, they're pointed straight at that road that goes to the inner parking lot. So that has the advantage of taking some of this traffic out of the neighborhood and putting them in the inner parking lot. You can have a sign there that says, inner parking lot straight ahead. And from what I understand, hearing the Rangers talk a week ago when we had another meeting, they were saying that the inner parking lot is not that highly utilized. So this solves that problem. Um, Another problem is, is all the congestion. You get all the congestion because of the, the people, the, tr the pedestrian traffic, and this causes traffic to back up on Arbalus. So this whole entrance the way it is right now is really set up to be worse than using the other entrance. So I think you really have to consider option five as being the best solution in this case. Thank you, Mr. Nicholson. Thank you. Are there any questions? Commissioners? No. Thank you for coming down. Appreciate it. Our next speaker is Mark Lichok. <laughs> I missed that last time you were here. Yeah, Lichok. 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 Thank you. I think you spell it wrong. <laughs> yes. My name is Mark Leachock, live at 838 Bright Star Street, about two-thirds of the way down. A um, lot of stuff going on that I have to talk about here, so I'll try to make it very quick. Um, starting off with some kudos to the traffic department. I don't think anyone's mentioned it, but we did get the letters way ahead of time this time. We had more than a week's notice. That was great. Thank you very much. Um, disappointment, though. On the document that was sent out, from what I understand on the website, is only put out 48 to 72 hours ahead of the meeting. Uh, and you might have talked about this before I came in. Attachment six is not attachment six from the February meeting. It's almost like a bait and switch because the one we talked about in February was a diagonal that went down and would uh, move the car to behind the house here. All of a sudden, and thanks to Dave, <laughs> um, I'm finding out that there's a new diagram, a new attachment six. The neighbors on, our, on Bright Star were not aware of this. We were under the assumption that as of the last meeting, everything was go for attachment four, for attachment five, option four. Um, the board voted four to zero on it. Great, thought it was going to go back for the design, be finalized, pretty it up, make sure it's everything's done. A Couple of the residents, made plans according to that, they're not here tonight, and now all of a sudden we're dealing with a new design that basically puts, if you can go to the next attachment, six, puts the, a second lane and, uh, right behind their house and three others going on down. They're not here right now. I tried to get them this afternoon to see if they can have a fair chance to say what's going to be right behind their house, but they're either on business or away or just out to work. If anything, I would, re I would ask that you actually delay doing an action vote on this today 
to give them at least a fair chance to say what's going to be in their backyard. And I understand about this, the time and everything. That's the next question. I thought, after seeing the design, it's a nice design. Uh, you guys did great. The designs are definitely working in the right direction. Can I interrupt you for just a yes. second? Would you just every time you no 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 <laughs> I can hear you fine. Every time you use the design, mm -hmm. the word design, yes. identify which one you're talking about. When you say it's a nice okay, option, so and so is the nice design, so that we get an idea of where you're going. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, both option five and option four, nice designs. Okay. Um, I do have several issues with this one. One thing that I saw with the design today with option five, uh, whenever I first saw it, it gave me whiplash because now I'm totally confused as to what we did the last two meetings. Thought the whole point was to protect the house here. Dave, you know, absolutely, your safety is priority. And to try to get it in as quick as possible. All of a sudden, we're jumping to this one that's going to be twice as long to put in you're putting a turn lane right here where you actually, you got a gas pipe going across here. So I'm sure that's gonna take some time. You got some pipes actually sticking up out of the ground and I don't know if those are water pipes, gas, what? But they're gonna have to be removed. You're taking out trees that, yeah, you can put the trees elsewhere, but you're also affecting what some of the people on this street are gonna be looking at. Along with that, with option number five here, yeah, you have a turn lane here, but after the three cars go there, back up, yeah, it does go on to Arbalus. At least right now, whenever it comes to the end, go to option four, please. Usually the traffic does flow to the left if they go into the park, and it flows to the, they're able to scoot around it to the right. They're not prevented from moving. Also, and you're tr absolutely true about the trucks, and it kills me too. Every so often, about at least once a month, at least once a month, there are trucks that come in, they go down here, Make a U-turn and go right back out. And we're talking semis. Don't know where they're going, but it's something to do with GPS. Um, with the island, at least, and especially considering there's a lot of stuff going on with the CRPD right now, uh, as far as Wildwood, and you're part of that, uh, part of the problem with, uh, I, I would say, go with what, what we could start with now. We could always add on, but there's a lot of stuff already in the works. If you want something quick, safe, you will do the job, Give us some time to figure out what's going on with Arbalest, because even with the parking lot here, if, as long as the parking comes in here and goes out here, you're not having any cross traffic going. If you direct the traffic, back to option five, please. If you direct the traffic into here, you have the traffic going out here. You're gonna have a collision going right here. That could increase that too. And as far as uh, traffic coming down Big Sky, Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, do we have any questions for the speaker? No questions? Thank you so much. That concludes the public speaking tonight. Staff uh, will now comment on the speaker's points of view. Okay, we uh, took a couple notes uh, regarding the, uh, some of the comments from the speakers. Um, uh, one of the early comments was why there is no uh, 50 mile per hour advisory, advisory sign from Big Sky into Arbalus, whereas we have it on Arbalus into Big Sky. The uh, general idea behind that one is because Arbalus is a 45 mile per hour road, and because of the road curvature, uh, we generally post the, that type of signage from the uh, higher speed road going down into the uh, lower speed road and that's why it's posted there we could post it on Big Sky which is 25 miles an hour onto Arbalus um, but uh, uh, that sort of leads to the issue of um, you know were there additional collisions in the prior year other than these three uh, DUIs that occurred in 2016 uh, we took a look at the records dating back to 2012 and that's um, I believe that's four additional years. Uh, there were three collisions. None of them were related to the park. Um, there were two that were related to additional DUIs. Two additional vehicles did um, uh, fail to make that right turn from Arbalus into Big Sky Drive. One occurred at night. One occurred during the daylight. Uh, the third incident occurred when there was a southbound vehicle coming out of the neighborhood. Um, 
failed to make the right uh, or the left turn correctly, and they struck the existing center center island. Uh, I guess there were debate whether or not uh, there's um, one option is better than the other in terms of the left turns um, into to access the park. Whether option number four, um, you know, the, the the advantage with option number four is that there is a larger stacking area on Arbalus, and cars who want to go into the neighborhood they can pass um, to the right. Versus in option number five, uh, the issue would be that once that left turn pocket fills up then cars would then uh, cross into the bike lane, which would be solid. We wouldn't be dashed, so that would be a violation if they were to cross into that bike lane. And um, there's also the issue with option number five, uh, the ingress uh, being in conflict with the egress, where vehicles that came out of the park from the, uh, the, the out driveway, uh, they would be um, in direct conflict with all the cars that are trying to, to go into the park. Um, also, the issue about whether or not the left turners into the park would yield, you're going to probably have that with either option number four or option number five. If drivers are not uh, yielding currently today, um, option number five would not correct that issue. Thank you. Does that okay. conclude your comments? Mr. Mishiko or Mr. Finley, did you <coughs> yes, have I, something? Yes, I to have add? a few more that I'd like to to uh, bring forward. Um, uh, one other item is on option five, um, those making that left turn, if they were to get into that spot and see that they were not able to make that left turn, uh, there's not as much room to make the U-turn there. Um, so I guess those folks would probably have to, I don't know what they'd do exactly, because uh, there's just not enough room there. Uh, they'd probably have to pull back out and It'd do a three-point turn or, or whatever. It's just not as much room there. Um, <clears throat> I uh, also wanted to point out, I, 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 hate, I hate to do this to the Traffic Commission, but I'd like to go back to option four for a second. So as, as I'm listening to these comments and, and thinking, uh, listening to the commissioner's comments as well, um, we could... At this at this point with option four, we could we could add a short um, left turn lane at the end of this, which uh, would maybe make that um, that turn in with again uh, additional signage and everything else. Maybe give us the the um, the this is the left turn into the park. Um, at that location, and and we could we could look at that. Um, it still might, uh, in fact, we believe would require the removal of uh, the first tree, but we're not exactly sure. But I think we measured that, and but but it wouldn't require more than one removal. So, yes, um, I have one comment on that. Uh, I like the idea of making a left turn pocket there at the end, but would that compromise uh, cars that we're trying to prevent going through the intersection, making more room for them to go left? Um, well, the, those that are turning, I'm sorry, those that are turning left into the park, are you no, talking no, about no. the errant? The impaired driver uh, would have a little more room to negotiate further south. Well, and if they did negotiate further south uh, and they, they missed the guardrail, space. they go off into no, no man's land. Okay, yeah, which you. still, which, so, which yes, is kind of okay. Limo. Um, so, uh, so that we can sort of follow the 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 order and uh i'd like to put a motion forward that would at least open up discussion uh and my motion first of all uh, my motion is to uh accept uh and recommend to our council option four and um, i would leave it up to staff whether they want to include or not include the left hand turn after they do a little bit more checking when it goes to council so it doesn't have to come back to us uh, and in a little bit of defense, um, it, it seemed to me, and, and one of our speakers brought this right to the forefront, that we should come up with a solution that creates as few new problems as possible. 
we're talking about a park that is very heavily used. And so for that reason, if we were to go with option five, the new problem that we're buying ourselves is extreme congestion because there is no traffic flow anymore. Traffic flow is completely decided, not by the cars coming down Bright Star, they'll, they'll go into it, but all of the people exiting the park will now impede everything else, all the way down. We have no, we have no more uh, uh, blend of, of traffic there. So congestion is a problem, and when you have congestion as a problem, eventually circulation becomes a problem. So. Um, I'm, I'm really concerned with creating new problems. Um, my motion is to uh, uh, accept option four with the uh, staff making a decision if uh, a left turn lane there is, um, is practical. Uh, and that recommendation would go to council. And that's my motion. Thank you, Mr. Lemo. Do we have a second? Ms. Engler? I seconded the motion. I'll open up a uh, conversation now among the commissioners. Any comments, Mr. Gregory? Yeah, there was one thing I wanted to know about, and that was the marking in the parking lot. Because what? It's gravel now, right? Did they talk about paving that at all? Or, you know, uh, can, can, can they make the signage in the parking more efficient to accommodate? Our design okay that that was an item that was discussed uh, last Tuesday night we had a neighborhood meeting with the residents of a Wildwood uh, neighborhood and the parks district did bring up that issue but uh, the consensus from the residents is that they do not want the parking lot improved in any way they just want to leave it in its current form uh, general idea was that uh, from the residents they do not want additional uh, improvements that would attract more uh, guests coming to the park well uh, my point would be more because uh, uh, one of the speakers Paul Nicholson made a good point and that is the uh, the inner parking lot isn't being utilized so is there signage or anything they can do to improve that I you know I drove all that but I didn't look for signage in the parking lot um, we can we can request that they consider that absolutely once they know what we're, our plan is we will work with them to try to improve the efficiency of the flow of traffic within their parking lot but but they're not planning to pave it at least at this point in time and uh, and therefore they can't mark spaces or anything like that so they absolutely can improve signage I'm sure they wouldn't mind doing that um, right uh, we'll work with them because if they're to congested in the outer lot and the inner one's not being used I mean, it's just silly not to But uh, that was a good point by the way. Okay. Thank you. Yes uh, Ms. Simpson Anything no all right. I I too was swayed by Nick mr. Nicholson uh, describing an inner parking lot because a lot of the residents in the area are concerned about parking and if I didn't know about inner parking lot, I don't think the general public going over there probably knows it either. So it needs to be identified. This would certainly um, help with the uh, congestion in the area too. Um, as far as Mr. Lemo's point, I'm thinking that there won't be a traffic uh, congestion there. We're looking at 80 feet from the exit to the entrance and uh, cars are just not going to be accelerating that fast. I'm drawn to the fact that you can make a left turn in a straightaway where you can see way ahead. I don't think it's, um, I, I don't see many situations where you can turn left on a curve. It's, uh, and so consequently, uh, I'm leaning towards uh, option four, and um, I, would, uh, in, I would also say that, um, dang, there's one other thing too. Well, I'll remember it later. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yes, Ms. Engler. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so I am leaning towards uh, option four. Uh, the, the reason why I'm going this direction is that I'd like to see how this works first. There's a large investment in time and in redevelopment. And I'm not, sh in terms of going with our option five, which is much more complex, and I don't know if it's the if it's necessary to uh, protect the homeowner and manage our traffic. So I'd like to start with this first 
and send this on to council, have them consider when they get the final design. So that's the direction that I'll be voting tonight. Thank you, that's a good point. Um, how would you feel then at a future meeting that uh, we would be sitting here talking about whether we need to put a stop sign there? Well, I think I said last month that um, we may have to revisit this and reconsider the, de the design if what we approach is not enough. So I understand that the traffic that's visiting the, the, the vehicles and people using this area coming to the park as it increases now uh, it may indicate that we have to do a different design. So I don't want to invest a lot now if what we do um, doesn't solve the problem and cost us a lot of time and energy to get it done. I'd like to start with this first and then go forward with the next step. Thank you, Commissioner. I, I believe we also have to pay attention to uh, the uh, residents and what their feelings are. I, I noticed tonight uh, five of the six speakers um, were for option five and one was for option four and I think we should take that into consideration as well I, as a maker of the motion I'm not going to go again until all the comments are made so I think Oh, yeah. oh good. <laughs> Ms. Commissioner Simpson. Well, my compliments to the staff for making the modifications. This design has come such a long way. I think both are um, very good, and I love that the, we've consistently eliminated the parking because I think that's definitely going to um, meet the needs of the community and creating an increased sense of security and safety to the local homeowners. Um, I am leaning towards option four, and my basis for that is because I agree with um, Commissioner Lameau and um, really trying to take the approach of creating as few new problems as possible. And one of our speakers also highlighted the complexity of the new traffic pattern that would be induced by option five. So with that, um, I like the flexibility that as this design um, continues to mature that we're gonna put this in the hands of the council um, and the staff to make the best modifications to meet the needs. Thank you, Commissioner. Ms. Commissioner Gregory. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give my input because I, I, I saw a lot of people wanted option five, and I, I think a couple things weren't considered, and that's the U-turn that's forced. Also, since uh, the, uh, the stack up is only about three cars deep, um, and we're going to have a permanent bike lane, that, that's going to cause a serious problem with bike riders in that area. It's going to force cars over there. That's a violation. Boom. Um, you know, we're here for safety. We're trying to protect people making that turn. I don't want to do that at the expense of bike riders and all of a sudden cars get impatient and swerve over and, you know, because they don't want to wait behind. So, um, although, I, you know, I see some positives. I see that causing other issues that we can't really address or solve. So as long as we can direct traffic to that uh, inner parking, uh, I'm leaning towards option four also because it gives us the option to put a uh, stop sign later if we need to add some other increments because we're here uh, to try to create a safer environment, all right, for everyone that's utilizing this. So that's what we're really trying to do here, all right? That has to be bike riders, car drivers, everybody. So. Uh, I think it also gives us a little more flexibility in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Does that con oh, Mr. Lemel. As, as the maker of the motion, I'll conclude, uh, make the concluding comments. Um, first of all, I too want to thank staff. I think you've done a, a, a great job of, of listening and examining virtually every situation. On one hand, I don't think there's ever anything in the process more important than the public's input, with one exception. We have a luxury that the people at City Council don't have. Nobody elected us, okay? Our job is to react to what we know and what we've been taught and what we've been shown. And, you know, if any people up here ever run for council, if we came up with the wrong idea as far as you're concerned, we're not gonna vote for us. But there's nothing more important than us being honest with you. And I think public, Input is important. I will never pull public input up here. 
not up here or when I'm hit up at Costco by just trying to walk down or, or, or going to the grocery store. It makes no difference to me because I think the public can teach us a lot about things we're not seeing. But there's no way, if you're enjoying your life in Thousand Oaks, that you can know all of the rules we know a very little bit about. So while I did hear a lot of comments in favor of, of number five tonight, um, quite frankly, the thing that swayed me the most was one gentleman's uh, uh, explanation of four. Uh, to me, I think uh, option four does three things. It does the least amount of change in people's mind and in the flow of traffic. I do believe that when you're changing the exit and the entrance and combine that with the fact that all of the exiting is going to interfere with the entrance and the entrance is a left-hand turn across heavier cross traffic, that's going to cause another problem. And I'm trying not to domino other problems. Um, so I don't want to ever say that we don't pay attention to the comments of the public because I think it's important that we do. But regardless of the comments of the public, we have to do what we think is the right thing to do. Um, and, uh, and the other thing that has me a little confused, and I'll just be blatantly honest, is I was under the impression, even though I wasn't here, I did read my notes and all, I kind of thought that we too did decide last meeting that option four was the option. I think the staff has tweaked it, made a suggestion it's a little bit better. But, you know, now to do two deliberations and still come up with option four uh, has me convinced it's, it's right. And there's one other last benefit. Option four gives us options. Option five doesn't. Option four allows us to improve to a stop sign if we feel that's necessary. Option four allows us to improve to more of the aspects, or I, I don't even know if improve is the right word, but to go to more aspect and design of option five. Option five, you're stuck with. We're not going to, I mean, I can tell you this. There's nobody up here that wants to go back to council and recommend we put the median back in after we've taken it out. And so for that reason, uh, I, <laughs> no, it's not going to happen, <laughs> not unless they're going to bury one of us in that median. <laughs> so for that reason, uh, my closing comment is to, uh, uh, to thank staff and the public for the time they put in and go with option four. Thank you, Mr. Lummel. If there's no more discussion, I think we're ready to take a vote. All right, Ms. Zambrano, would you please call the vote, please? When your name is called, please state yes or no. Commissioner Engler? Yes. Commissioner Gregory? Yes. Commissioner Lemo? Yes. Vice Chair Simpson? Yes. Chair Reeder? Yes. And the motion carries five to zero. The Traffic Commission makes recommendations to the City Council and interested parties may attend the meeting and speak either for or against the recommendation of the Traffic Commission. Any person wishing to appeal a decision of the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission shall file a written appeal and pay an appeal fee with the City Clerk's Office within 14 calendar days of this decision. The matter will be referred to the City Council at the earliest reasonable and available date. The appeal fee will be refunded only if the City Council overturns the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission's decision and an appeal form is available from the sec recording secretary tonight. Thank you, Ms. Zambrano. Our, our next order of business is the status report of prior traffic commission recommendations. Is that for you, Mr. Finley? Yes. Thank you. Uh, yes, Chair Reader. Uh, the uh, flashing yellow arrow uh, staff report has that, that came to commission uh, several meetings back is scheduled to be heard by the city council on April 11th. Uh, once that uh, goes to council, uh, if if they uh, uh, approve that item, then we will move forward with installation of those seven flashing yellow arrows. If you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. Oh, were you going to mention Waverly Heights as well? That that is item eight, and uh, we are prepared to move forward with oh, item I'm eight. Sorry. I'm skipping ahead. Um, all right, uh, item eight. Uh, first of all, are there any questions uh, for Mr. Finley from commissioners? None? Oh, thank you. Item eight, uh, commission referrals from last month, February 15th. 
Yes, uh, we have two items uh, for referrals. Uh, Jim Mashiko will handle those items. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, these are a couple items that we sent out uh, by email earlier today, some uh, information to you so that um, give you a little bit more background. Um, uh, the first item is the uh, neighborhood meeting with the Waverly or the Wildwood Park residents who have concern over the uh, popularity of Wildwood Park and all the traffic and parking issues going on there. We had a meeting last Tuesday uh, at Wildwood Elementary School. The Parks District hosted the meeting. We had public works staff there, uh, police department uh, also present. Uh, but th the, um, in, in summary, the, uh, the minutes that you received earlier uh, basically sort of focus on a uh, couple things. Uh, parking parking issues that occur uh, there. We presented issues or uh, an option to possibly expand parking on Avenida de los Arbolas, remove the bike lane. Uh, the residents didn't appear interested in, in going that direction. Uh, we also provided information on what it would take to uh, create a permit parking zone uh, for the neighborhood residents, and that's a petition process. That's something that uh, it appears that the residents may have some interest and they may move forward with that. Um, <clears throat> in terms of what the, the Parks District is going to do, uh, they talked about the possibility of expanding their parking lot or uh, improving the parking lot. The residents indicated that they didn't want to have additional parking provided or improving the parking because of the fact that their goal is they, they didn't want to uh, attract more visitors to this particular location. Um, so that, that item uh, improving the parking um, on site uh, probably won't move, won't be moving forward. They will take a look at increasing the ranger presence, and also using social media as a tool to encourage uses or encourage visitors to visit other trails and uh, use other uh, entry points to the park other than the uh, Arbalus uh, uh, Big Sky location. <coughs> and then the second item. Um, was the Waverly Heights <coughs> neighborhood meeting that took place last Thursday, March 9th. Uh, that was hosted by the residents. Uh, Public Works staff and uh, uh, Parks District was there present to answer any questions. But um, what I did was um, presented uh, a copy of a petition that the residents were looking to see whether or not there, the, there was support amongst the neighborhood to uh, close some of the streets. And uh, what the pr residents presented was a was a plan to do a um, number of things, including closing um, Montgomery Road and Brush Hill Road, in addition to adding a, a multi-way stop sign at Montgomery and Brush Hill, having the city adjust the traffic lights at uh, two of the intersections that access that neighborhood, um, having the uh, park or having the school district close uh, the Waverly Heights Drive. Um, or having uh, <coughs> the access to the school closed and create an alternate a access point off of uh, Flores. Um, so if, uh, with that, uh, the residents will determine what the next steps are and if uh, we'll be uh, uh, involved with, with assisting them, we'll, we'll, we'll let you know what develops there. Thank you, Mr. Mashiko, for bringing us up to date. Um, is there a question from Commissioner yeah, Gregory? Yeah, I mean, so far as an alternate route over to Flores, that's just still hanging there, or is everybody talking? Well, that that was um, discussed at the me meeting, but uh, basically, what was uh, uh, I guess a more uh, um, realistic solution was to uh, try to attack the cut through traffic that enters the neighborhood from between Flores to Jans, and the idea with that would be. Uh, see whether or not uh, street closure would be something that the residents would agree with and that requires 60 percent of the 400 homes in that residence or uh, within that neighborhood to uh, have the issue come before the city uh, that's going to be a very difficult but doesn't that just force even more traffic down montgomery that already has 80 percent of it don't they i mean well well, what it would do is it would change a lot of the neighborhood traffic patterns. Uh, many of the residents would have to make sacrifices who don't live on Montgomery, where the traffic on Montgomery would decrease, causing traffic to increase on other streets. It would also require residents to use 
um, other access points. If you're used to going to Flores up Montgomery, um, you're probably going to have to re reroute your trip. You may have to use Columbia to Moore Park wow. and basically go around the block. So, so this is going to, uh, excuse my term, but with what comes to me is this is going to become a little pocket community where there is no straight, you know, ingress <laughs> into it. <laughs> I mean, and everybody's going to shortcut and onto everybody else's street to get there. Wow. I like to see how that votes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'll be interesting. All Thank right. You, Thank Commissioner you, Commissioner Gregory. On agenda item eight, we have two speakers. First speaker is Mark Lichek. Thank, thank you for giving me a second chance to pronounce your name. I got it right? Okay. Please state your name and city of residence for the record. That one was basically start talking, and then anyone who wanted to hands, it turned into a free for all. They took a brunt of a lot of stuff, so sorry about that for the residents on behalf of the residents, but I appreciate you guys there. Um, a lot of stuff is going in, is in the works right now with between the residents, uh, CRPD, Wildwood. Um, one thing that we have come across is that Wildwood, basically as we know it, is half of Wildwood. Um, for all intents and purposes, whenever anyone refers to Wildwood, it goes from the eastern flank of the park to uh, the sewage treatment plant. Mm -hmm. The park from the sewage treatment plant to the far west is Mayo Canyon's park. And it's considered separate, even though that has another parking lot at Rancho Caneo and a, a, a two parking lots at Hill Canyon. One of the ideas that we have as residents who are working with the CRPD is to try to get those so that they're technically combined so that it's recognized as one park and the park has three parking lots and to designate one of the other parking lots, primarily, hopefully, the one off the Ranch Camayo, since it goes through the business district, it's right off the freeway, it's not in a residential area, as the primary address so that whenever people do come from out of town, that they're able to go put in the address for their GPS, it directs them that way. That way it keeps the residents, or the uh, Wildwood Park that we know on our list, more so for ones that know for the residents, not excluding anybody, but anyone that's coming for the day to go through Rancho Paneo or Hill Canyon if they're coming from Western Ventura. Um, if they're coming off of Rancho Paneo, like I said, more tax revenue, hopefully they'll you know go through uh, use our services the stores, the restaurants, and everything, get to know more about Thousand Oaks, and in the process, start distributing the load off of our list to the other parking lots. And I'm glad that you went with option number four just for that reason, because I know it's gonna take time, and it's not a sure thing, but at least this way it does protect the neighbor, and it does, like you said, give us the option, let's see what happens. Uh, same with the parking lot. Uh, a lot of residents said that they don't want any type of thing changed to the parking lot. A lot of residents also said that they wanted gates at the uh, end of every street there and that the, we should have docents putting, uh, only allow docents to have led tours into Wildwood. So as more information comes out as to reason why, cause and effect, um, we're working with the CRPD, working with the traffic department, working with the sheriff's department. Uh, more things will come out. So we might be back on option number five, but for right now, this is good. Uh, incremental changes are always good. So, uh, and as far as the signage into the secondary lot, uh, just FYI, they opened up the secondary lot this past weekend for the first uh, time this year. Mm -hmm. uh, the roads are pretty rutted, thanks to the rain. Um, so, and a lot of car people just don't want to get their cars dirty. So, I mean, it, it, there were about, whenever I checked a couple weeks ago, there was about 20, 30 cars there at noon. So people were starting to use them, but even some uh, wouldn't go in until they followed the ranger truck in. Thinking it was safe, so the signage is actually a good idea. I don't think so either. It, it's just an opening. A lot of people think yep. it as uh, just another trail. Thank you. So, 
I, I just wanted to give you a heads up, let you know what's kind of in the works. You might be back, um, but just to fill you in on the picture is what's in the works. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lake. That one made some very good points. Good thinking. Appreciate it. Yes, uh, Commissioner. Not a question, but you're always welcome to return. Warn me first about how to pronounce your name, though, okay? Our next speaker is Mr. Lake. Please state your name and city of residence for the record. CRPD and the city really need to work on traffic in particular bike to the water thousands. I am not sure I, I, I have an idea when you did your traffic survey. every car trip that um, intended to bring somebody to hike to the waterfall in a single parking lot but hike to the waterfall into Google and find the address don't find an address in the parking area easier hike to <coughs> any other This, this parking lot at the end of Arbalest is the only dirt parking lot that's right on top of some houses and it generates a lot of dust. Last night I was awakened by some kid doing donuts called the TOPD, left a huge cloud of dust and, and was gone before the police arrived. Um, there's, uh, there, there are a lot of problems. There, there's a, there were two patrol cars in the parking lot. Monday night until late. Uh, there seems to be some activity going on at night in this parking lot uh, that people probably wouldn't care about or notice if it were at the inner parking lot, which is not near the houses, if it were um, one of the parking lots on Hill Can and Rancho Pena Hills are not near houses. That, you know, it, it would be much less of a disturbance in those locations. So there really is a need to develop a plan to spread the traffic out to other park entrances uh, instead of forcing the residents of this one neighborhood to, to suffer the problems of this, this popularity. And, um, the walk to the waterfall really is amazingly popular. I actually leave my house and go hiking with Griffith Park. Last weekend I went hiking at uh, Priming Canyon in Los Angeles. Both of those places were much less crowded than the ground, which was eight feet from my front door. I just can't stand the kind of crowd. The volume of people and some of the composition of the crowd that's attracted to the waterfall to jump off of it and do kind of high risk activities. So I'm really urging uh, everyone here to consider a regional plan to distribute the crowd. Thank you, Mr. Lake. I appreciate it. Any questions from commissioners? No? Thank you, Mr. Lake, for coming and uh, giving us more information. Appreciate it. Agenda item number nine is now the work program and commission schedule. Oh. Commissioners, um, any comments? or? 
Uh, Commission Reader, I do have a comment oh, on the I'm last uh, the last yes, item. Yes, Mr. Mishiko, um, did you want to comment on the public's comments? Yes, there was a comment made uh, that the traffic counts that we conducted over by uh, Arbalis and um, in the neighborhood uh, was done during a rainy period. Uh, that is not correct. We did do those counts the last week of February, uh, first week of um, March. We ended the counts on Saturday. Saturday was a very sunny day. It was uh, very good weather. The rain uh, started on Sunday. Uh, we did not use the counts. We had the machines still out there on Sunday, but we did not use those counts that occurred because of the rain that occurred on Sunday. So all our counts do reflect sunny, clear weather. Thank you, Mr. Mishiko, for that clarification. Agenda item number nine, work program and commission schedule. Commissioners, any comments? Any questions for staff? None? We'll move on to, did you have one? Mr. Lim? Um, I know that uh, that the city attorney is, is considering the necessity of just giving us all a refresher on uh, Brown Act and, uh, and, de and decorum and, uh, uh, and order of a meeting. And it seems that our work schedule is light enough that we could maybe schedule uh, uh, on an off night, schedule a time for the commissioners to go through that. Uh, so, for example, if our next meeting were to take place in May, maybe our April, whatever time free we have in April, we could spend a half hour, 45 minutes just getting the refresher course. That'd be fine. Thank you. Commissioner? That doesn't have to be noticed, right? No. So you could just throw out some dates mm -hmm. and poll us, right? Yes, that that's correct. We could do that at a different time. We All could right. uh, we could actually do it at the same time as the commission meeting, I believe, if that was the if that was convenient because people had it already on their calendars. Is, is this the normal canned one? You know that they can go. Okay, it takes me thirty minutes. Yeah, it's about thirty minutes. About All thirty right. minutes. We just have not had one. Uh, they recently completed one at the plan commission, and we're just going back around to right. all of Yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah, we could do that, too. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be good for me. I've been on this commission five years, and I've never ha had any <laughs> help. <laughs> Thank you. I can, um, if, if we could uh, schedule that potentially the week of April 3rd, one of the, any of those nights, that would be great, because then we have spring break coming the following two weeks so the April meeting uh, there is over spring break is that what you're saying yeah on the 19th <laughs> so if we did on the 5th that would work great yeah uh, let us let us look into that we will pull the commissioners okay. for that and also check with the city attorney's office to make sure check their availability as well um, uh, so at this point in time based on the schedule we have some items uh, that we can bring forward uh, maybe we should consider cancellation of the April meeting, um, and we will uh, work towards a full agenda for May, if you want to do that. And then we'll have this uh, other meeting um, in between. Yes. Commissioner Lemel. I'll make a motion that we uh, do, based upon the work schedule that we have, cancel the uh, April meeting, and our next meeting would be the second Wednesday of do we meet the second or the third? Which which Wednesday is this? Third. Third, the third Wednesday. Third. Okay, well then, the third meeting. Thank you very much. That would be, yeah, it is May 17th, I think. Yeah, two days after my anniversary. I did know that. So Mr. Lemo has made a motion. Do we have a hand vote? All those in favor, please raise your hand. And the motion carries five to zero. Thank you, Ms. Ambrano. Item number 10, traffic commission comments or discussion. Any items that anyone wants to bring up? Yes, Commissioner <coughs> Gregory. I, I just have one quick comment because, uh, you know, we've been dealing with this arbalist big sky, and I just want to thank staff. You've, you've been patient with the public and us, and I swear sometimes I think we were just chasing our tail to get back to kind of what I had in mind from the very first meeting. But with all the input, it's just a good reality check to know that what we 
first thought with some major improvements, you know, is, is what we have consensus for. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I, I agree. It's best to, to talk about everything else rather than look backwards and talk some more. Um, I noticed uh, in the news this month that on March 10th, the uh, California DMV gave out regulations to allow driverless autonomous vehicles to be on our streets. This is up for discussion. I think they're going to have public input next month. But in forward looking, um, this is going to come, maybe not in our lifetime. But along this line, I would like to ask my fellow commissioners if they would like to um, study traffic circles because eventually controlling intersections with red, yellow, and green lights is going to be history. And traffic circles I've seen work well. Um, if commissioners want, we could uh, direct staff to see if there's any location in our community that a traffic circle would be a good idea. And if so, prevent, present that to us for consideration. Commissioner Gregory? Yeah, I'd just like to make a comment that I did not have a conversation with him on traffic circles prior to this. <laughs> <laughs> but I have brought that up before, so thank you. <laughs> yes, Mr. Lemel. I, uh, I don't know what the what staff's uh, workload is like. I, um, I have a lot of experience with uh, semi-autonomous uh, driving, and um, uh, traffic circles have always work very well the one thing that's always sort of deals them out when you get right down to it is just the the cost and the real estate that you need uh, to do them but what uh, what I think you might be surprised to know is that the vehicles being developed today and it's going to change I'm sure but the vehicles being developed today are being developed based upon white stripes red green and yellow signals including the car uh, that I currently drive and um, so the the bigger study issue which probably doesn't get to to us but the councils all over are looking at is dramatically changing the parking code and reducing the parking code because cars autonomous cars do not park autonomous cars drop you off and go to the next location you send them to whether it's to pick up your cleaning drop off your shoes whatever um, and that's how they're being tested up in the Silicon Valley. So I think, you know, if there's articles that you can forward us on traffic circles, but I don't know if, if there's the, the time available for staff and the workload available to study traffic circles, there's a lot going on in, in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. They've got uh, probably two, two and a half dozen traffic circles in all their new housing developments. And it works really well but I don't know how well it's going to work with the autonomous vehicles. Thank you, Mr. Lemo. Uh, yes, my point was whether or not we should include uh, a discussion of traffic circles at some point in the future um, in, in a casual way, not to, to really um, do a lot of analysis and study. Yes. Um, just, just to give the commission an update. Um, we are actually, uh, uh, anytime we have an opportunity to, are looking at a, a new traffic signal, we're looking at the possibility of a traffic circle. Um, I will tell you, and, and, and Commissioner Lemo hit it right on the nose, uh, they're using those at all their new developments. And uh, it's, it's very difficult to come into an existing intersection um, where there it's developed on all four corners and start to put in a traffic circle. Obviously, they take a lot more room. Um, however, there are some opportunities within the city. Uh, we were evaluating one at the intersection of Lawrence and Teller, which is um, actually an, a, a, an intersection that we're contemplating with traffic signal. Um, you know, a lot of advantages. There's no long-term maintenance there's no no energy use no signal maintenance so um so we are we are interested in looking at those there are also the use of traffic circles as a traffic calming measure is also uh we have an item on kind of our future future agenda which is to look at traffic calming what's out there today what's being used and we will be 
uh, bringing that back to commission as time permits. Um, so it, it is on our radar. We are considering it. Um, and uh, again, all, all the issues that you all brought up right of way, um, they work real well in new, new, new intersections or new developments, which we don't have any anymore. We're kind of built out. Um, so we have to figure out where the right places are to maybe utilize them within the existing things. So we, we will keep the commission posted and, and, uh, we are supportive of any of those new technologies and are tracking them. So my understanding is that you will uh, occasionally inform us about your thinking of traffic circles where the real estate will allow them to be placed? Absolutely. If we are proposing or considering uh, one, we will bring those to the commission really as part of that project. In other words, uh, we, haven't, we haven't installed any new signals recently. Um, we have a few on our list, and one of those happens to be a candidate for a traffic circle. Uh, we did some preliminary work and found out that a traffic signal would be nearly twice as much as a traffic signal. So um, we're, we we haven't brought it forward because we're not sure we're ready to make that recommendation yet. Very good. And we also haven't recommended a traffic signal at that location. So thank you, uh, Mr. Lemo. One of the one of the things that sort of forces traffic circles to have more consideration on new developments is that when there's a new development you can still get development fees and maybe a little land in lieu of development fees. When you're doing backfill, um, it's pretty hard. It's, it's really, yeah, because you're actually, it's almost more of a public taking at that point. Oh, yeah. And so it's, it's really, really difficult. Um, well, I wasn't uh, talking about backfill so much as right. future thinking. So, and that's what our illustrious... Uh, traffic engineers are already doing. Thank you. All right, should we move on? Any other questions, comments? All right. All right. Uh, we will conclude our meeting. The next uh, Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission is now adjourned until 6 p.m. in May, and the date I don't know, May 17th. 2017 in the boardroom of the Civic Arts Plaza on the third floor. I wish you all a good night.